Here's the word, the big word, neuroplasticity. I'm sure many of you have heard it. Some of you may not have. To be plastic means to be moldable, shapeable. And so neuroplasticity refers to the brain's ability to change, to be shaped. Here's what you need to understand to, to begin with. Your brain is always plastic. It's always being shaped. Old patterns are either being further reinforced, being more deeply encoded, or change is happening, shifting is happening. That trajectory is slightly, you know, being adjusted. You're always being shaped by influences and you are always shaping yourself through the things you do and say and think and feel. Every single thought, feeling, behavior, attitude, desire, every single one of those things has an effect literally, physically, at the level of the neural structure of your brain. What you do matters. What you say matters. What you think, believe, and feel, it all matters. So change, when we talk about change or transformation, we're not talking about turning on plasticity. That's just a process of the brain that happens. What we're talking about is applying this process that's already going on in your brain to change the trajectory of our development as a person, which will change the trajectory of the development of our relationship. You just have to understand what, what's happening, how it works, and then shift and adjust, move yourself to leverage this biophysiological process that has psychosocial, ethical, spiritual implications for who we are and how we show up with other people. Now, there are two things that are required, two steps in the neuroplastic process. You know, I'm headed this direction and I want to begin slowly changing that trajectory in, into a new direction. Here are the two things. Are you ready? Work and rest. Work and rest. So here I'm going to go full blown professor mode. I am, I teach at a, at a institution of higher education. So I get to geek out as a professor. I'm going to go full blown professor mode on you and we're going to go to the whiteboard. Okay. So when we talk about neuroplasticity, as I just said, we have to have both work and rest by work. I mean, focused effort. I'm talking about, there's going to be struggle. You're going to feel it. You're going to have to push yourself. Okay. And then rest by rest. What I mean is recreation. All right. Think Sabbath renewal. Okay. Not numbing out, not that sort of thing. So work and recreation. Here's why. So I've drawn for you here. This is way oversimplified. All right. If there are any actual neuroscientists on there, I know. So I've drawn some neurons here. Okay. And these neurons have these gaps between them. And that gap is called a synapse. And there's something called Hebb's rule, which has been known for a long time, which is that neurons that fire together, wire together. And so the more I do something and this certain, you know, this certain chain of neurons keeps getting fired on and, and having this pattern of activation and connection over and over and over, they fire together, they wire together. So let's say we've got this, these two neurons here and they have always, not always, but they have for a long time been firing together. So maybe, and this is again, the thoughts I'm going to put out there don't exist in one neuron. Okay, but you know, probably in billions of neurons. But let's say what we're talking about is maybe it's I see my wife begin to feel pain or anger. And what I always do, it seems, is begin to shut down and get quiet. And I could have just as easily said, get big and defensive or disappear or people please. That's one too. So I, I do this over and over. And so this is what I've done over and over. And now, and every time I do it, what I end up doing is strengthening this connection. And I do it again and I strengthen the connection again. And by the time I've done this 10, 
thousand times, it's like, you know, water taking the easiest path, the path of least resistance. That's it. But if I want to change, let's say now I want to be able to hear my, hear or see my wife's pain or hear or see my wife's anger. And instead of moving away, I want to move forward. And let's say this neural pathway would take me down the direction of moving forward. That's what I want to happen. I've got to focus on it like a laser beam. This is the problem right here. This is the problem that she's angry and then I withdraw. And again, remember, I could write a hundred different things there. She's angry, so I withdraw. I want to respond differently. She's angry, so I move in, move close, something like that. So I'm focusing on it and I exert effort. It's work so that now I actually do it one time. Whew, okay. Now here's what's gonna happen. In that effort, there's a whole cocktail of chemicals there. Norepinephrine, the dopamine. Actually, we haven't gotten to where dopamine enters the process yet. But there's this cocktail of neurochemicals that come out of in that struggle as I'm trying, as I'm working, as I'm exerting that effort, these, these little chemicals come and mark that spot, that new path it just took. Then the next time my brain is in a state of rest, so I go to sleep that night, or maybe I go for a walk in nature, or maybe I have a practice of meditation or prayer, but it's when my, my brain is in a state of rest and renewal and relaxation of open, no calm, serene, serenity. When I'm there, then, then the brain goes back and actually tries to build in the new connection. So in other words, if I put out all that focus effort, but I never rest, I never have good sleep, I never have that serene walk, I never have that peaceful meditation, I never find that place, then all that effort thrown out because the solidifying of the plasticity, the actual laying down of the new connections happens during rest when the brain goes back and looks for these markers. But let's say I do that. Okay, now I've got this one pathway. Now it's still going to be my primary trajectory to go this old way, but I continue like a laser beam to be focused on this new thing I want, this new way I want to be. And I put effort toward that happening and I do it again. And guess what? more of those chemicals come out and then I rest that night or that weekend and my brain actually lays down, you know, cements it a little more and I do it again and it insulates it more. That is how neuroplasticity actually works. So here's what I want you to hear from, from this little whiteboard lecture here. If you're not feeling the effort, if it doesn't feel like work, it's not going to work. There's got to be struggle focused effort. And number two, if you're not getting rest or if your partner is not getting rest, whether betrayed partner, addicted partner, if there's no time for recreation, I know that recreation looks like going out and play, which play is one way, but think about that. That's recreation, renewal. If that's not happening, if that's not built in, the lasting change will not happen. Hey, Dr. Jake here. I just want to say if you've enjoyed this content, you might find yourself helped by my brand new program, the Choose Connection Academy. Years in the making, what I've finally done is I've taught through my entire couple-centered recovery model and created an online coaching program for couples to be able to work with me and move through this process of healing and recovery together. It is broken into different levels based on where you are in your journey. It includes video teaching that you can access at any time, exercises for you to do as a couple, community of others moving through this same material, access to live group coaching calls with me every single week, as well as a number of other bonus resources and, and uh, opportunities for you. Just take a look at the link down in the comments below. We'd love to have you book a call to be a part of the Choose Connection Academy.